photos of nude females. Earlier in the week, prosecutors called a pilot and house manager who both testified that Jane traveled with Epstein and Maxwell. The house manager also described how Epstein and Maxwell kept strict rules telling staff to see nothing, hear nothing, say nothing, and to never disclose their activities to anyone. Neither the house manager nor the pilot said they saw any signs of sexual abuse. However, the house manager said when he cleaned up after massages a handful of times, he found a large sex toy in the massage area. So far, the jury has heard from eight government witnesses. Prosecutors said they intend to call three alleged victims to testify in the coming weeks. Maxwell's attorneys have sought to chip away at the credibility of the government's witnesses. They have said that Maxwell is a scapegoat and she is being prosecuted for Jeffrey Epstein's crimes because he cannot. Boris Christie. John Sweeney's with us now. He's the creator of the podcast Hunting Ghislaine and a former BBC investigative reporter, by the way. John, so good to have you with us. Let's jump off that point that Kara was just talking about, that some say uh, Ghislaine Maxwell is a scapegoat to be prosecuted because Jeffrey Epstein cannot. W what is your thought on that? My view that is that this is a dark fairy story um, and that there is no way a young 14-year-old girl would get into a car with a man like Jeffrey Epstein. But if the person enticing her in talks like Mary Poppins is nice, pleasant, a woman, uh, a beautiful woman, then you, you may well get in the car. And that was Ghislaine's place in the in what I like to call, I'm afraid to say, the, the, the Jeffrey Epstein sort of fresh child factory. It was, it was industrial. Um, the number of girls, the evidence is compelling and damning. So the idea that Ghislaine is just some kind of scapegoat, that seems to be complete nonsense to me. So I want to read something that you have said in the past uh, regarding Ghislaine. You said, after the monster her father died, she found a second monster, Robert Maxwell stole hundreds of millions of pounds from people who were dependent upon his good word. Jeffrey Epstein turned out to be a darker figure, a worse human being. So what are you trying to say then about Ghislaine Maxwell in that, in that statement? This is a kind of tragedy, Christy, in that the idea that, uh, and Ian Maxwell, her older brother, has said that Jeffrey Epstein has ruined Ghislaine, and I think the evidence is compelling that her life was ruined long before she ever met Epstein. Her life was ruined by her father. There is a mountain of evidence that Robert Maxwell was a horrible and abusive man, abusive to virtually everybody he came into contact with. His staff, the newspaper journalists who work with him, people I know, friends of mine, and his family. And in particular, his youngest daughter, the one he loved the most, the one he called his yacht after. There is some evidence that um, there was some kind of sexual relationship between father and daughter. Now, this is disputed and the evidence is by no means clear. The source is somebody who's had a history of psychiatric ill health. However, there are people in Britain who believe this woman to be telling the truth. So there is the possibility. But the reason why Ghislaine couldn't see what she was doing was very, very young, very, very wrong to these young women, to these 14, 15 year old, 16 year old girls, is because she didn't realize herself that this was wrong because she'd, she'd been through it herself. Now, it's not clear, but that is, there is some evidence to that. There's no question whatsoever that Robert Maxwell was a horrible, abusive man. Towards the end of his life, he, his personal hygiene was disgusting. All these stories, stories of abuse and so forth. So there is, take the sex stuff aside, there's absolutely no question that, that Ghislaine was horribly psychologically abused by her father. He died, the first monster in her, in her life died, and then she flew to New York and found a second monster, Jeffrey Epstein. And what happened when her father died was that there was a massive disgrace and he lost, uh, she lost access to the fancy cars and the limousines and the helicopters and the lovely dinner parties with people like Bill Clinton and Donald Trump and Andrew Windsor, also known to some as Prince Andrew, the Duke of York, I just call him Andrew Windsor. Mm -hmm. and, and all she had to do for Ghislaine was provide fresh children. And that's oh. what she did. 
John Sweeney, um, thank you for uh, the background. Again, those are some of uh, the comments that that you're hearing. They're not necessarily coming into the courtroom, so we need to make very clear that on a, from a legal standpoint, we can't confirm that um, from that legal standpoint. The question is what's going to happen then in the courtroom as well. John Sweeney, thank you so much, sir. Appreciate it. We'll be right back. Thank you.